thank you today. We bless you, Lord of heaven. We celebrate you for who you are. Thank you for bringing us into your presence this morning. And thank you for what you are set to do with us here today in the name of Jesus. Lord, speak into every heart. Let your word burn like fire in us today. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Glory to God. Hallelujah. Repositioning. I can't tell what I'm talking about. Repositioning yourself with covenant responsibilities. You can make use of covenant responsibility to reposition yourself. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Because you see, it is the applied word, the word of God, where you apply it and put it to use that it produces. Amen? We can read it. We can preach it. We can quote it. But until we apply it, the result does not show. Look at it. Matthew 6, 33 is up there. Jesus said, of course, we know the, the statements that came before. All that the world is looking for, right? He said, but you, that but you tells me stories that you are not like them. Amen? You are not like them. He said, but you, you seek first. Can I hear you say seek first? You. There are a lot of things going on in the world. Don't worry about that. You seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. You seek that first and do it right. And he said, if you do, all these things that people are running after will be added unto you. You do that. If you want God to pay attention to you, if you want God to intervene for you, you do that. And that's what a lot of us are still struggling with, doing that. The, the issues of this life are still pulling us, right? From doing that. That's all that the issue, that's all the devil is contending about. Because the devil knows, should you reposition yourself with covenant responsibilities, he can handle you. He knows that. He knows that. You remember what the devil said about Job? He said, is it not because you have put an hedge about him that I can't touch him? So it's not everybody he can touch. He knows that. So he's contending with your destiny. And how is he doing it? Pulling you off from just this. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Give me verse 34. Look at verse 34. I want you to see something. And I'm going to paraphrase it. He said, take therefore no thought for tomorrow. But that is what has consumed everybody, the thought of tomorrow. Are you following me? What tomorrow will be? How am I going to pay my bill tomorrow? My lease is due. My mortgage is due. If I don't do this, how can I get this done? That trouble is what is driving everybody. But you know, when he said, you seek first the kingdom of God, he said, you seek me first and I will take care of that for you. Amen? You seek me first. Stop worrying and disturbing yourself about tomorrow. Seek the interest of his kingdom. Doing it right and God will take care of the rest for you. When we become committed to the interest of his kingdom, the interest and the welfare, I like the statement, I don't want to go there so that I don't digress too much, that was said of Nehemiah. Like I told you, I, I learned a lot of things. It's lifestyle from Nehemiah. It was Nehemiah that I read where as governor, and it was his entitlement for the state to feed him. That he said no, and he was still feeding multitudes, and would not let the state feed him. Amen. The Bible says, Sambalar and Tobiah, the Horite, when they heard that Nehemiah was come to seek the welfare of Jerusalem, to seek the welfare. When we begin to mind the interest of the kingdom. 
you see how things begin to turn. So if you want to enjoy supernatural intervention, get committed. Can I hear you say get committed? Get committed to the interest of the kingdom of God. That is whatever concerns the kingdom concerns you. I, 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 I said something on Wednesday and I still didn't change it. We have this small church signpost, right? At the junction there. How many of you know about it? That small signpost. Can I see your hand if you know about it? Can I see your hand if you know about it? I know you know about it. Put your hands up. I want to count. Why? Okay. You don't know about that signpost on the junction? No, you. You don't know. You want me to speak French? Can I, let me see your hand. See, keep it up. Keep it up. Excuse me. Is that hand up or? Okay. How many of you noticed that for the past two weeks it's been down? By the side of the road. It's been down by the side of the road. You drive past it every time. Last week, I wanted to go pick it and put it because I do it sometimes. And the Holy Ghost told me, no, don't. Watch. Let's, shh, let me show you something. It's your church. You know it's your board. You see it down, but you just don't even bother. So just even pack and put it up. That's how easy we don't pay attention to the things of God. You get my point? That's how easy, you know, it doesn't really matter. That's something as minute as that. I wanted to last week, and the Holy Ghost told me, no, 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 no. How many, people, how many of your people, go leave it there until you ask them. How many of them have noticed it and not even bothered? That's how easy. Are you following me? You come to church, sometimes maybe you see one flower is up, you just pass by it. It doesn't really change anything, but I'm trying to pick you some little, little things. Are you following me? That, but if it, <laughs> something deep in you, I want you to let everything that touches his kingdom touch you. Are you following me? That a man was come to seek the welfare, the Bible says, of the children of God. Apart from myself, my daughter, and Mulex. I know Mulex a few times every time he passes this, he will pack. Because I always pack when I see it. Sometimes they will, you know, they come to cut that grass. We have to go and be searching for that thing somewhere. One day I found it in the church beside it. But I'm just giving you a picture how it is that the things of God, the things that concerns his house, are you following me? His mission should concern you. Praise the Lord. I said, praise the Lord. Because it is kingdom commitment that qualifies you for supernatural manifestation. It's what qualifies you for supernatural intervention. It's what qualifies you to enjoy the blessings of God. We are God's covenant children. Stop living as if it doesn't matter. That is where your life anchors. Until that aspect, are you following me, is pursued with passion, the generality of what you are looking for will not blow up. You are not like them. He said, but you. Let them do what they do. But what? You. Your own is different. The way to your own liberty, freedom, prosperity, and all that goes into it is seeking first the interest of the kingdom and all that he commands. That's what it means, and his righteousness. And all that he commands. I think it was uh, two Sundays ago, Pastor Debo was preaching here, and towards the end of his message, he, talked on, he touched on tight. And I looked at it, I said, I know a lot of people here don't really pay title. I don't bother, I don't, I don't even talk to you about it. But then the Holy Ghost told me I should talk to you about it, because I'm not helping you. Let me tell you something. You see, God is committed to what he commands. Is it that you do it, he answers you, or you don't do it, you can't change God. You can't, um, what language can I use? You can't manipulate him. You can't force him. He's, he's, he said, in the beginning was the word, right? And the word was with God. And what? So he's already his word. You can't separate him from his word. Yeah. 
are you following me? He hears what? His word. So if you don't do what his word says, you understand me? What can he do? Nothing. Nothing. And we read these things, we hear them, we just, and then we keep pushing to see how things will change. No. Uh, you know, I banned the Kentaiwo from reading from Malachi because every time I say you take offering, it's only Malachi he knows. But I'm, I'm going to borrow his Malachi from him this morning. Am I, am I permitted? Thank you very much. Amen? It's 310. Now listen, he said, of course you know it. Bring the other title to and prove me. That's what he says. Prove me. We may be teaching on that later, but let's leave that. That means, no matter, and I want to even say something, I don't want to talk too much on the book. Some people even say, okay, once they pay their tithe, they think that is all. That is not all. That's just the beginning of it. God don't demand 50% of your commitment. He demands 100%. I don't mean of your wealth. 100% of you. Amen? Glory to God. No matter your financial predicament, however it is, that is non negotiable. In fact, I was almost getting when the Holy Ghost told me last week to say maybe I will change the way we record. I'm still trying to come, get myself to that point. I will record your financial record. Maybe I'll create volume tight. So when you are giving your offering, if it's tight, don't mix them. Right tight. Three cents. Offering, two cents. Don't just give five. Write it. For, maybe for your own, I don't know what word to use. Not to record. Your own to God, to know what you are doing. I don't talk to you much about money here because we, I just trust God for what we need. He takes care of it. I go my way. But God told me I'm not helping you. Yeah, because you need to be told the truth and be made to do the truth. Amen? Amen. You need to be told the truth and be made to do the truth because there is no remedy. It's not going to work. They can pray 20 prayers for you. It still won't work. Jesus is Lord. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. He said... Thou shalt not appear before the Lord empty. It's a decree. It's a decree. He said it. They that sow in tears, they shall reap with joy. Sowing in tears means you have so much to do that you don't have enough and you must still sow into God first. Not just the tithe, still sow into him. Glory to God. How about service? I'm talking of repositioning yourself. You reposition yourself in your tithe, in your offerings, in your service. Are you following me? Exodus tells us, Exodus 23, verse 25, and you shall what? You shall what? None of you know that? Thou shalt serve the Lord thy God, and he will bless there is no shortcut. There is no shortcut. Thou shalt serve the Lord thy God, and he will bless. If you are not committed in service, you are shortchanging yourself for his blessing. You reposition yourself. I've told you, the prayers that I pray that sometimes before they leave my mouth, the answer comes. Uh, when I tie whatever I'm asking to what I'm doing that he has called me to do. It, it's like this. Many people want God to honor them, but the Bible says, Proverbs 27 verse 18, Whosoever keeps the fig tree shall eat the fruit thereof, so he that waits on his master shall be honored. Who is our master? What does it mean to wait on your master? You're like a waiter, right? Whatever he wants you to do, you're available. 
Yeah. Amen. He said, the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole heart to show himself strong on the behalf of them whose heart is perfect towards him. In the New Testament, he said, them who love him. Because does not just show off to everybody because you come to church. No. He shows off to those who love him. He manifests himself to those who love him. Come with me to John 14, verse 21. Everybody. John 14, verse 21. He that has my commandment and keeps them. John 14. He that has my commandment and do what? And do what? So you see, it's not only hearing it, it's not only preaching it, it's not only knowing it, it's, but it's much more in what? Keeping them. He that has my commandment and keep them is he that loves me. Not he that I say, I love you more than anything. I love you. That's singing it. He didn't say he that sing it. Amen. He that has my commandment, and which, well, I'm, I've been picking some of the things he commands. Tithe is commanded, offering is commanded, service is commanded, everything that he commands. Is, is he that loved me, and watch it, he that loved me shall be loved of my father, and I will love him and manifest myself to him. I will love him. So God does just manifest himself to people. No matter how hard you pray, there are things he has commanded that makes him manifest himself and prove himself. And love is not an issue of just speaking. The Bible says, love not only in words, right? But in deed. So love is to be proven. You prove it by, the, by your hearts, by the things you do for him, by the things you do to him, by the things you do with him, by the things you do. You get my point? You prove it. Jesus was talking to the people in his time. He said, you have not the love of God in you. The people were angry. How can you say we don't love God? He said, by the way I see the way you are loving, I know you don't love him. A lot of people, when you tell them this, that, that kind of statement today in church, they will be very angry. Say, do you know my heart? I say, you, see, you see, God has done it very well. If he has left it in, in the heart, then everybody will say, he said, no, love not only in what, but in what? Indeed. So show it. I'm not a woman that you say I love you, then I'll be smiling. They can capture any woman with I love you. When they don't tell her they love her, it's me she cries. So, so just let me preach my message today. Amen? Show it! David said, because of my affection for the mouth of my God, this is what I have done. Show it. Prove it. Seek the welfare of his house. Amen? Seek the welfare of his people. Seek the welfare of his kingdom. Let the things of God move you. Wake up in the morning. What do I do for my God again today? Go to bed. How far have I impacted my world for the kingdom today? Amen? How do you honor him? God himself said, oh, how does God honor us? He said, I will only honor those who honor me. First John chapter 2, verse 5. Whoso keepeth his word, in him verily is the love of God perfected. <laughs> Whoso what? Keepeth his word. His commands. In him is the love of God perfected. So it's, there are things to do to prove that law. He said, for this is the love of God that you keep his commandments. And his commandments are not grievous. When he's to give, you give him your leftover. You say you love him. What kind of love is that? What 
when he's to serve him or be with him or fellowship with him and other brethren, you have more important things. I always, when I talk of love, I don't, I talk of love between boyfriend and girlfriend, not husband and wife. Husband has already captured the wife, so he's not under tension. But boyfriend wants to capture the girl. Eh? Oh, holy God knows how many miles I traveled those days. I went to places I would not go naturally. Are you following me? I went, what would I be saying I'm looking for in Sokoto in Nigeria? Because my, my wife, my fiancé there was serving there. I went there. What are you talking about? Are you following me? You, there is something moving you, driving you. Are you following me? Pushing you. Everybody is calling you. Don't go. You will hear. Don't go for what? That's what we're talking about with God. Are you following me? There is a panting in you for him. For his things, for his church, for his work, for his word. There is that panting. You spend everything you have as if you have not spent enough. You don't even care. There, there is that push. Glory to God. You know, Isaiah says something. I quickly said Isaiah said it so that you won't accuse me for it. In fact, Isaiah was actually quoting God, actually. Isaiah 29, verse 13. He said, Wherefore, wherefore the Lord said, For as much as these people draw near with what? Please, let's go there. I want you to see it. Isaiah 29, verse 13. Whereas, for as far as God, these people draw now with, draw near me with their mouth. We say a lot of things. He's wonderful. We love him. That's with the mouth. Thank you. With their mouth. He said, but, and with their lips, do honor me. But have removed their heart far from me. Can you see the? Are you following me now? Say a lot, sing the Lord, say a lot. But the heart is not there. You want to know what to do? Mary told them, John two five, whatever He tells you to do. Those are great covenant secrets. You cannot be involved with the affairs of the kingdom and God will put you aside. It's not possible. I want you to leave this place today with a commitment on your inside. And that commitment is to God. First with your tight, passionately, with your offerings and your sacrifices, your service of him, your minding the interest of his kingdom. Lord, I want to see your kingdom possess this place where I live. And what it will take me, I will give. I live for the interest of your kingdom. And you will see when you start doing how he will recover your life. You know, we are still in the restoration series. I love this man a lot, Nehemiah. If you can, read the book of Nehemiah, you see what I'm saying. Pat I patterned my life after, after him in a long way. Because he wants to see the kingdom of Jerusalem rebuilt. He gave himself for it. Come with me to Nehemiah 13. What? Nehemiah 13. Thank you. Verse 14. I'd like somebody else to read it for me so that you don't say it's pastor who is manipulating it. Remember me. Oh my God. Why do we even give you a microphone to sing? Your voice is louder than the microphone we use in this place. Okay, sorry, go ahead. Remember me. Oh my God. Okay. Yeah. What not out my good deeds that I have done? 
Remember me, O oh my God, for this, concerning this. Well, and wipe not half my good deeds that I have done, right? For the house of my God. That I have what? Not that I profess. Not that I preach. Not that I sing with my daughters, you know. That I have done the good deeds of his house. Thank God being in the choir is good deed. After all, some of you have voice. You never come to our choir. Very shortly, you'll be jealous of our choir anyway. My good deeds that I have done. My good deeds. What are you doing? Look at it. That I have done for the house of my God. So what are you doing for his house? And for the offices thereof. Go to verse 31. And for the, because he listed the things he did. I just jumped. And for the wood offering at appointed times. And for the first fruits. Remember me, O oh my God, for good. You can't be committed to him like this. With your strength, your energy, your skill, your resources. You just make yourself available for him. And they put you aside. Can we read Psalm 20? I think I want to do winner's tie today. We, re we read Psalm 20 responsibly, verses 1 and 4. Do you know what that means to receive responsive? I don't know what that what actually means. When I read verse 1, you all read verse 2. I read verse, that's why you do doing winners, right? You have forgotten that side a long time now. Amen? So let's go to Psalm 20. We just read verses 1 and 4. To four. I read verse 1, you read, all read verse 2. I read verse 3, and you all read verse 4. Are you ready? Yes. Are you there? Yes. We read in English. Oh. Uh -huh. <laughs> no, no, no hard French to what we are reading. Amen. 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 The Lord hear thee in the day of trouble. The name of the God of Jacob defend thee. Can we read it together, everybody? Verse 2. I know you are not reading because your voice will have gone above all of them. So since I didn't hear your voice, I know you are not reading. Okay, let's start again, everybody. Verse 1. I'm reading verse 1. Don't bother going verse 1. Just leave them on verse 2. I'm reading verse 1. The Lord hear thee in the day of trouble. The name of the God of Jacob defend thee. Remember all thy offerings and accept thy burnt sacrifice. Okay, thank you. But you can see the sequence. The Lord hear thee in the day of trouble. The name of the God of Jacob defend thee. He will send you here from the sanctuary. He will strengthen you out of Zion. But how does he do it? He will have to remember first your offerings. The kind of offering you think. You think it's the kind that God will remember and move? I'm, I'm just asking. Are you sure it's the kind that when God remembers it, he will move? Or he will say, I didn't even see it. Remember your offerings and accept your burnt sacrifice. Not only offering, there is also sacrifices. And then when he does, verse 4, grant you according to your heart desire and fulfill all thy counsel. Listen to me. What is coming from you should be what moves him. I don't just mean only in money, I mean in everything. That will always move him. When we say go out, look for people, invite and bring, some of us don't even bother. All those things count. Everything in this kingdom, everything you had to eat, does what? Count. But doing it, move, be moved. Be motivated, passionately. Remember your offerings, your sacrifices, your service, your commitments. 
I give us two, I call them great covenant giants. Go to Numbers. Numbers 25 from verse 10. I like this story a lot. There was crisis in, in the camp. They are misbehaving. Everybody went their own way and God plagued them. And nobody did anything and the plague was there. But then one day, one young man took it all upon himself. His, his name is called Phineas. Phineas, the son of Eleazar, the son of Aaron. But let's read verse 11 now. Watch what happened. He took a step for the, for the Lord, but watch what happened. He, he didn't do it so that God can do anything for him. He's just doing it, his passion for God. Like some people are giving offering. Before the offering leaves their house, they say, God, look at this $20. Uh, by tomorrow, so, so, so must answer for it. Sometimes you don't put tomorrow, but you are giving him so that he can give you back. Every offering you give like that doesn't do anything. Now verse 11, let's go. He said, Phineas, the son of Eleazar, the son of Aaron, the priest, I turned my rod away from the children of Israel while he was what? I didn't hear you. While he was zealous for me. What does it mean to be zealous? Or if you look uh, if you hear what uh, Sandra said, he says how did you pronounce it? Zealous. If you say that in my country, nobody will know what you are saying. <laughs> eh? Zealous. Xerox? Oh, okay. okay. I'm just trying to understand all your tongues and languages. When he was zealous, what does it mean to be zealous? Huh? Passionate about? He was zealous. He took it upon himself every time. You get my point? He said, because he was zealous for my sake. That's what God said. Watch. He was zealous for my sake among them that has not consumed the children of Israel in my jealousy. Verse 12. Watch what God said. Every time you demonstrate your zeal, going out of your way in doing something for his kingdom, you never lose for it. He said, wherefore? <laughs> say, behold. I, can I say, I give. I give. God always gives something in response to the demonstration of your zeal. Amen? I think we should ask you what you did to this girl. Because this girl has always been quiet in this church. <sighs> okay. We'll talk that one later. Don't you all agree with me? Have you ever had that girl? She has always been very quiet. And he's the one who brought, him, brought her in today. So we, we need to find out from him what he did. Uh, maybe. <laughs> Amen. He said, wherefore, I what? Give. When you demonstrate your zeal in any form for his house, for his kingdom, he always gives you something. He always Wherefore I give unto him my covenant of peace. And if you continue, you can see it. And he shall have it. And he seed after him. Even the covenant of an everlasting priesthood. He, I give. Now watch. That guy didn't even do it to get anything. He did it to demonstrate his zeal for his God. Amen? He did it to demonstrate his zeal for his God. And God said... Wherefore I give. The second person I show us, we all know so well, his name is called David. And I, I read the scripture, I think it was on Wednesday, 1 Samuel 25, verse 18, about David. That statement was made by a woman, uh, the, the, the wife of Nebal. 1 Samuel 25, verse 18. He said, And I know. That the Lord will build my Lord a sure house. Yeah. What verse did I give you? 28, sorry. Verse 28. Click on verse 28. 
Hallelujah. No, chapter 25, verse 28. Okay. I pray thee, forgive the trespass of the handmaid of the Lord. Now, now this is what he said. For the Lord will certainly, can I hear you say certainly? certainly. What did you say? Certainly. certainly. I like the word that your whole body moves when you are saying. <laughs> For the Lord will give my Lord certainly. What does he mean certainly? Huh? Not quickly. Surely. Definitely. With I mean, you can't miss this one. What will God certainly do? We make my Lord a sure house. Uh uh. Why? Look at it. Because you fight the battles of the Lord. You don't fight for yourself, you fight for Him. Everything that concerns Him, you take it upon your head. That's what it means. You are always there for Him. You fight the battles of the Lord, and evil has not been found in thee. When you take His mission, as your mission, with your strength, your skill, your resources, your strength, everything for his house, he takes over your own. And of course, hear what God says. We know about David, so I don't even need to preach over. God himself said, David is a man after my own heart. God himself said, because he has set his affection upon me, I will deliver him. I will honor him. We had that. He was a man that went out of this way for his God. Even in the jeopardy of his life, right? While everybody was running away when they saw Goliath, David said, who is this uncircumcised Philistine to defy the hardness of the living God? Practically what David says is, I'd rather die fighting him than see this one insult my God. King, even the king has disappeared. With all his title. Are you following me? So it's not about title. It's about your heart for him. And proving it daily. Proving it. Putting yourself on the line for him. Hallelujah. Hear David speak. First Chronicles 29. Verse 1. First Chronicles 29. Verse 1. Thank you. No, don't put it. First Chronicles 29. Everybody look at it. Furthermore, David the king said unto all the congregation, Solomon, my son, whom alone God has chosen, is young and tender. And the work is what? The work is what? I mean, many people leave the church work for the pastor. There is one God called, what is our own? You don't say it that way, but that's how many people do. Look at I'm showing you word by word. He says, Solomon, my son, whom alone God has called, has chosen. Yes, God has chosen him. He's yet young and tender. And the work is what? The work of the kingdom is great. Jesus himself said the harvest is plenteous. But you need laborers to harvest. The work is great. But everybody, please read the last statement. Who will live in the palace? Who will live in the palace? No. I know you are trying to be religious. No, just relax. Who lives in the palace? The king. They want to build palace for the king. Or church work. Oh, this is Pastor Toji's church. Oh, this is Pastor Taiwan's church. Oh, this is... It's nobody's church. It's God's church. The palace they will build, who are they building it for? It's for Solomon. But David is given an understanding that they need to have. The palace is not for man. It's for the Lord God. The church is not man's own. It's God's. Whoever is called to pastor the church is just grammar, like Solomon was chosen. It's God's. So you are not doing it for the person. You are doing whatever you do there for the Lord. Even if you do it toward the person, good or bad, that's, I need to put good or bad. Because some people do when they do bad to the pastor, is the pastor. No, you are still doing the bad to God who called him. And when you do good for the pastor, he's to the pastor. No, you are doing the good to the God who called him. Good or bad. He says, Solomon, whom God alone has chosen. Yes. 
He said, the work is great, yes. And the palace is not for man, but for the Lord God. So every time you come here, if you can't see it as the house of the Lord, to, whom, to which you must demonstrate your commitment, you are missing it. And hear what David said next. Verse 2. He said, now I have prepared. <laughs> I like that one. I have prepared with all my might for the house of my God. Not for the palace, not for Solomon's house, for the house of my God. Now I have prepared with all my might. With everything inside me. That was why, even till today, you know, in Israel, they don't celebrate all their kings except David. They still celebrate the 10,000, 2,000 years of David, 3,000 years of David. They, that's what they celebrate. Because nobody gave himself to God like him. I want you to know, just like that video we just saw, everything you do for the prosperity and the welfare of the kingdom, you are actually doing for yourself. Amen? So it's time, time has come to give yourself to it. You go out to invite people as if you are inviting them for your birthday. You go, you, when it's coming to, you give your best. Your tithe is not missing. You come, something needs to be done. Don't look for who will do it, do it. As long as it's within your capacity. And the one that is not within your capacity, you have prayed to God to give you capacity to do it. Amen? That's how we serve this God. That's how we bring this God to honor us. That's how we reposition ourselves within the covenant. That's what I mean. Repositioning yourself within the covenant. Verse 3. I just picked the first statement. He said, moreover, because I have set what? I have set my affection to the house of my God. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And I like words there. He said, I have of my own proper good. <laughs> not leftovers. Not by the wayside. Proper good. Jesus is Lord. Like I said, stop doing God with your leftovers. It's an insult. It's not the, val the, 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 the volume. It's the value. That woman gave two pens. Jesus says she gave more than everybody. You remember? And uh, what's his name? Peter returned to John. He said, I don't think God saw what that woman gave. Are you, are you following me? I don't think it's okay because I saw it. And Jesus, knowing what he was saying, he said, you see, the rest gave out of their abundance. They gave, it looks voluminous, but he still didn't make meaning to them. Are you following me? So sometimes you see somebody is dropping a check of 1,000. Are you following me? Another one is dropping a check of $5. This one is dropping $1,000. This one is dropping $5. And God is reckoning the $5 more than the $1,000. Why? Because the $1,000 still had plenty in reserve. So the $1,000 did not really touch him. But the $5 gave all that he has. You see the difference? Like a man of God said, he said, God does not rate you practically by what you gave, but God rates you by what you have left after you have given. And that makes sense. What you have left. So someone had more in abundance, he just gave. Her. And everybody, I remember that's why when we started this issue of giving with envelope. Because when somebody wants to give 1,000 naira those days, you will see it like this. Everybody will see it. And if he said five naira he wants to give, we'll squeeze it. You know? <laughs> Nobody will see it. But God don't judge us that way. Your five dollars may make more meaning than another one's hundred dollars. Because the one who is giving the hundred dollars has plenty in reserve. You get my point? And the one who is giving the five dollars give all that. What I'm saying is, it's the value. What you are giving to him must make value to you first because it makes, before it makes value to him. Amen? Jesus is Lord. Your heart should reflect 
in what you are doing. You are always looking for what to do to advance his kingdom. You are always looking for what to do to add value to, to him. You are always looking for what to do to add to the welfare of his kingdom. You are always looking for what to do. You come, you see empty seat and it pricks you. you. Say, I must do something about this this week. You are not talking to anybody. It's only him that hears you. Amen? And you are doing it and you are doing it. Nobody even knows. Perhaps even when they know, they do not acknowledge you. Because some people can be angry that you see this pastor didn't even greet me very well today. All those things don't matter. Let him see what you are doing. He is the rewarder. Jesus is Lord. Stop carrying what we call a consumer's mentality, a give me, bless me mentality. Oh, God just bless me. Oh, God just give to me. But rather carry a giving mentality. What you are doing for his kingdom. Because God holds no man nothing. It's not man. And he does not forget. At the right time, he will answer. So you keep checking what is it that you are adding? What is it that you are doing? What is it that you are giving? What is it that you are bringing? You keep doing that and he will do his own. Thank you, Lord Jesus. There is that statement in, um, about Abraham that uh, I like so much. Come, come, give me Genesis 22. I know everybody knows the story, but I just want you to see. Uh, go to verse 14 first. Okay, let me quickly get exactly what I see. Genesis 22. Verse 12. Verse 12. I want to show you something before we go to verse 16 and then we close. I want you to leave this place today determined that God, you will know I'm here. <laughs> oh, sorry. I normally put this off. I don't. That God, you will know I am here. God, you will know I'm here. Amen? Amen. <laughs> And I got to in heaven can see a need somewhere there. He said, don't worry. I know my son is there. He will take care of them. My daughter is there. He can't, he can't close his eyes to something like that. Are you there? Okay, everybody. Uh, 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 relax. I didn't say read. I just say okay, everybody. Eh? And he said, lay not thy hand upon the lad, neither do thou anything unto him. God was, did not want the blood of Isaac in the first place. But read the next statement. Excuse me. Can you read together? Okay, one to go. Stop. For now I know. You see, I, I, I'm a Bible teacher, but I always tell you something. I don't want to prove anything in the Bible. I just want to show you what he says. God says, for now I know. That means he didn't know before. Uh, some of you say, no, but God knows everything. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just good. Are you following me? You have to prove it. Now God knows my heart. Okay, he will bless you in your heart. You've heard that cry before. Oh, God knows my heart, but they don't do anything. God said, because now, now watch. For now I know. Why? Because you have proved it. For now I know that when it comes to the things of God, no negotiation. You don't negotiate it. You do God first. Now I know. Now go to verse 16. I want to close now. Verse 16. And he said, and said, by myself, have high sworn, saith the Lord. Now read the next statement. So, because you have done this thing. Did you get my point now? God, you know I love you. Good. Show it. God, you know I'm always there for you. Good. 
show it. Prove it. Because you have done this thing. That's where I'm going. Now I know that you fear as God. Because you have done this thing. So I close with the question. What are you doing for your God? What are you doing for his kingdom? What are you doing for the house of your God? What? Because those are the things that count. Sir. That's what he rewards. Are you following me? Those are the things that count. That any challenge come, you can say, God, remember, like Nehemiah said, I have done this for the house of I told you the story of a woman that was kidnapped for ritual killing in Nigeria. And she re remembered that she has, you know, in winners, I don't know whether they still do it. Those days we have tight booklet. Eh? We have tight booklet. Tight booklet is you write your name, the amount. It's like a sleeve, double sleeve. You write, tier one, you keep records. <laughs> you get my point? You pay your tight with that paper for church record, you have your records. And they locked her in a room that there is no way to open from inside. Then she realized that, those are not even the days of mobile phone. She realized that she has a tight booklet. So she, she waved her tight booklet to God. God, you see, in case you for, uh, your, your angels lost the one you have in heaven, maybe that's why you don't remember. This is evidence. And as he was waving it, the door opened by itself. She walked out. That's where people lose their lives for. So how much will you pay for your life? You get my point? It's not about money. It's about value. It's not about money. It's proving to God that you love him. It's proving to God that you can bank your life in his hand. It's proving to God that you are committed. You, you are living for him. Do bidding, doing the bidding of the interest of his kingdom. That's what we're talking about. Glory to God. Let the things of the kingdom move you from today. Seek you first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added. Pursue the interest of the kingdom. Everything we have to do, put yourself in it. Oh, you are busy. I know. You have tight schedules. Yes. But all those busyness and tight schedule without his blessing is hell. It is the blessing of God that make it rich without sorrow. Prove yourself. Rise on your feet. Hallelujah. I want you to ask God for help. Amen. In the light of what you have heard today, ask him for help. And make your commitment to the Lord. Your commitment of service, make it to him today. Your commitment in your givings, in your everything you do. Seek you first the kingdom of God. Make your commitments to him. Lord, from today, this is me for you. Tell him and ask him for grace to be able to do. When we say go bring, go invite, make a commitment. You may invite and they don't follow you, but go invite. That's what God sees. And as you keep doing it, they will follow. When you see a need in the church, don't work out that somebody else is doing. Give yourself to it. Just keep doing for the kingdom. Ask him for help and grace today. Because he's a faithful God. In the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you, Lord. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your presence here. Lord, I commit everyone here and as many as will hear this word to your heads. Let the grace of God come upon them for more and better performance in your kingdom. In service, in giving, in laboring, in investing for the house of our God. Let that grace come today. And everyone here that has been serving you, particularly paying their tithes to you, giving to you, Lord, let today be a day of reckoning. For all their service and interest in, in this church and in your kingdom. For all their commitments 
to your kingdom lord remember today remember them for good and let there be open doors this week for such in the name of jesus thank you heavenly father we give you praise in jesus name Amen. in jesus name Amen. put your hands together for the lord Amen. hallelujah please take your seat <laughs>